you, Jason. <coughs> Let's just start us off. Diego, uh, thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. Um, just, I know it might be a little painful to, to kind of look back at it, but um, can you take me back to to after Game Three, Houston, and kind of how the players and the coaching staff supported you and helped you through that moment? Yeah, uh, difficult situation. Sad, of course. Um, yeah, I had veterans help me. Coaches help me. Talk me through it. Um, of course, emotions to feel. Uh, probably the first time I felt like that. Um, yeah, so they helped me through it with with what's normal, what what not to over over think about, to to dwell on too much. And things happen, things come and go, and I know that. But um, yeah, sad moment. But we move on. Nothing we can do about it now. And I think it's it's on to next season. Um, dis- despite the the ups and downs of the season, the highs and lows, I would imagine, as far as your gameplay goes, your confidence has to be at an all-time high. And Pablo has trusted you for, for quite some time now on this team to the point where you've become kind of this offensive focal point. Um, what points in your game do you think allow you to be so effective at the MLS level? I think the biggest takeaway for me, uh, I've said it multiple times, has been my own mentality this year. I've figured what has worked for me and what... Um, what has not so I think my own mentality and what has helped me stay in the right mindset and and give me a a backup routine to whenever I'm feeling off to fall on has helped me succeed um and of course my work rate on and off the ball both sides of the ball have have given me the confidence the fitness and the the ability to to perform and and score goals late to score goals early um yeah and last lastly for me um what have you learned from, from this season and how excited are you to, to get back at it in 2024? Yeah, I think, like I just said, learning for myself was the most important thing. I think the biggest takeaway, the the mentality that I need to perform at, at, at that level and what has helped me. Um, and of course, everything that I've been growing on this year, um, just keeping my head down, working hard on and off the ball is gonna get me success later on or, or you know soon or later on. And I think um, with the players around me that have helped me and and have shown, you know the, the, you know, support that that I need to to perform and, and at times what I need um, has given me the the, you know, time for success and and I think that's what's what's helping me. Great. Thanks, Diego. Of course. This season tested RSL a lot. You know, there were injuries. Yeah. There were runs of good form, then runs of up and down form. Mm-hmm the way that the season ended for you guys, like it's, you know, it just seems kind of like a, a roller coaster in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, and when you kind of look back at the season and you look forward a little bit to next year as well, what do you think can, what do you think can you guys sustain from this season and like translate it to next season? And what needs to change in order for you guys to get to the goals you want to reach, the civil war that, that this club really wants? I think we we take away the positives of the year. I think we take away and we look back at film, we look back at the energy of the group on what worked. I think the biggest thing for our group is that we just got to work endlessly, 90 minutes and and we can fight our way into games and we could fight ourselves, you know, out of out of holes that we put us in, uh, put ourselves in and that's one thing that we need to improve on is not conceding early, not conceding the goals first and I think we we continue to to keep that and not let not concede early we will fight 90 plus minutes and we'll get late goals we'll get goals later on and we'll fight till that till that last whistle and that's our strength so i think not putting ourselves down in the beginning will, will help us in the long run whether whether that's um you know scoring early or scoring late we'll always create chances and stuff so i think not putting us down early would be the the biggest takeaway and when it comes to personnel i mean usually at the end of a season there's always questions like what does the team need? Does the team need an extra this? Does the team need an extra that? Hmm. You know, in terms of depth and, and personnel, does this team have enough to get to the silver where you guys want? And and if not, what kind of needs? What what needs do you feel like the team has from a roster standpoint that can that would help out? I think we have the personnel to to do what we want to do, and I think we were one PK away from you know all these talks being different and stuff like that. So I think. 
Um, we have the personnel. I think it's about everybody being at their best, and that's what a championship team is. Everybody's performing every day. Uh, mentality's right in the group. Um, everybody's focused, locked in, and has one goal in mind. So I think it's it's being switched on in that in that um, in that category. But I think everybody, as a soccer player and as a person, has the ability on this team to to be what we need and what we want to to win. You know, championships and, and win things. And uh, last thing for me, at least for now, um, I mean, you're under contract for a while, um, but usually with, when players have a really good run of form like you did the last few games of the season, there's going to be offers, there's going to be interest. I'm curious, from your perspective, how open are you to listening to potential other offers? And if you're not, how committed are you to RSL? You know, I, that's soccer, right? Of course, there's always going to be talks of other things and, and other teams, other contracts. Um, but for me... Uh, all I'm focused on is is coming back here next year, playing for RSL. Um, like you said, uh, I'm in a great run of form, and I'm gonna try my hardest to continue that, and and even, if not, do better next year. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm really focused on is playing here. And of course, you know everybody has agents and people that the club can talk to, blah blah blah. But I'm I'm solely focused on on just playing here, and whatever happens happens. But right now, I'm playing for RSL, and that's what I want to be doing, and I'm gonna give it my all. So yeah. How do you want to improve next year? What What are your goals? Yeah, I think um, I think I need to get more assists. I think I, I you know I ended the season with seven goals, but I think you know my assist number as an attacking player should be should be way higher. So I think that's one one area that I really want to um, improve on. But uh, yeah, continue next year scoring goals and being that guy you know where where we can have offensive threat and being the guy that that scores goals, that gets assists, and I think that's uh, what I want to do. And of course, continue on my both sides of the ball, defensively and, and um, you know, offensively, my work rate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've obviously quickly become a fan favorite. Um, what message do you have for the fans, you know, to, cap, to you know, recap 2023 and look ahead to 2024? Yeah, you know, I think on Instagram I posted something, and it's just about, you know, you you have a lot of emotions and feelings at times, but – the one thing that never changes is is how grateful like I am to to go out there and play in front of in front of our fans and, and just have the support from you know messages and and just people just asking for pictures out in public and stuff like that it's an unbelievable feeling and something that I've dreamt of as a little kid that I used to do you know with other players that I've seen around so just the support that that RSL has given me has is a big part of my success on why I'm able to be as confident and be as as comfortable as I want to be and perform at the level that that I am and continue to do so. So I think thank you to the RSL fans, of course, and um, yeah, 